sexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. There are two types of cells, the prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Living things can be multicellular or unicellular, okay? Multicellular and unicellular, ito po yung pinagkaiba ng dalawang uri ng cells, okay? Microorganisms are organisms that can be seen only with the aid of a microscope. The probiotic class is a substance or preparation. So this pro probiotic is a microorganism introduced into the body for its beneficial qualities and live microorganisms that are intended to have health benefits when consumed or applied to the body. And they can be found also in yogurt, yakult, fermented foods, dietary supplement at the same time in beauty products. Probiotics class are made of good bacteria that helps our body healthy and working well. So these good bacteria helps to fight against bad, bad bacteria. Okay, it also helps us feeling better. And the ingredients of this is called lactobacilli. Beneficial microorganism first, we have yeast. Yeast is used for baking purposes or fermentation purposes, okay? Yeast also used for food manufactured. Yeast is also used for fermentation and leavening of certain products. Yeast is a single cell microorganisms classified as a mold or a mushrooms and they are members of the kingdom fungi. Another beneficial microorganisms in the marine life is all about phytoplankton. A phytoplankton is a food source of marine life, okay? Ito po yung halimbawa, cyanobacteria, <coughs> diatom, dinoflagellate, green algae, and cucolithophore. Okay, these microorganisms are the main sources of all marine life. Okay, another beneficial microorganisms is nitrogen-fixing bacteria. So, this type of bacteria enrich nutrients and nitrogen fixation in soil. So, these nitrogen-fixing bacteria also help to neutralize the nitrogen air in the atmosphere. So, these bacteria would transform atmospheric nitrogen into fixed nitrogen. And then we also have a microorganisms that are beneficial to us, okay? One of these is Escherichia coli, okay, or E. coli. This type of bacterium that gives us gastrointestinal illness, okay? And we also have microorganisms that are considered as harmful, okay? First, we have the algal bloom. So, once the algal bloom is sobrang dami na sa tubig, maaring lahat ng mga marine life ay mamatay o madamage. Then, another toxic chemicals, walang iba kundi yung red tide. Red tide is a toxic chemical that produce harmful effects to all fishes, especially shellfish and other marine life and especially the humans. And then, athlete's food class is one of the common um, uh, sakit na kung saan ay nandahil sa mga microorganisms tulad ng fungus ay nagkakaroon tayo ng pangangati at ito ay too much exposure to the water. So, kailangan po natin maging maingat. So, take note, microorganisms ay meron din pong beneficial at meron din harmful tulad sa nabanggit ngayon. Okay, we also have harmful protozoa. A harmful protozoans class, we have amoeba, giardia intestinalis, we have also plasmodium vivax. A amoeba class causes amoebiasis or amoebic 
placenta tree in the human beings, and giardia intestinalis causes giardiasis, or in the intestinal disease, and the plasmodium vivax causes malaria, okay? This one is an example of amoeba, and example also of giardia intestinalis, and this one is a plasmodium vivax. And protozoans, these are the type of protozoans. Kung titignan ho natin, class, marami pong uri ang protozoans. So, ito lang po ang napili or ilan sa mga ilang protozoans na harmful sa atin. Okay? Then, we also have virus or viruses. So, the life of the viruses is not technically technically alive if it is not a living host. So, it is described as sub-microscopic infection agents. So, even the viruses class or the viruses can also infect the bacteria. Okay? So, the viruses will stay alive if they penetrate the live host. So, once they penetrate glass, they would easily replicate and the whole cell will perish and once this happened so ibig sabihin class there will be a cycle continues so ibig sabihin tuloy tuloy po magre-replicate ang viruses so ang tendency class so once the viruses is is outside in the environment class kung nasa environment kailangan po nating hindi ma-absorb yun tulad ng pandemic o ngayon naka-experience ng pandemia we experience coronaviruses, di ba? Dapat hindi tayo lumalabas ng bahay, okay? Para hindi natin ma-absorb yung viruses. Kasi the more natin na ma-absorb class, the more na ang virus ay mabubuhay at magre-replicate sa ating katawan. Kaya we need to be careful class about these viruses. Okay, next is we have a microorganism class reproduce rapidly due to its simple structure and size. But how do they reproduce? So, in what way microorganism class and other organism multiply? There is a one-way class. One way is to reproduce or a reproduction. So, when we say reproduction class, process where the offspring or a new organism created from parent or Parents. So these two types of reproductions are asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. A sexual reproduction class, uh, in terms in terms of one parent organism produces offspring without fertilization. Okay, in union offspring because of the offspring inherit all their DNA from the parent. They are genetically identical to each other and to their parent. And in a sexual production class, um, this type of organisms that are uh, considered as a prokaryotic cells or are called as prokaryotes, okay? A sexual reproduction class and organisms without cell nucleus or any other membrane-bound organelles. So most of the unicellular class are uh, or without nucleus and there are some prokaryotes class are Consider as a multicellular. Ibig sabihin, may iilan lang din po. So, the earliest and most primitive form of life on Earth is approximate 3 billion years ago. So, bacteria class is the first living organism live on Earth. Okay? And then there are different kinds of sexual reproduction. First, we have binary fission. So, animals or microorganisms under these is bacteria, amoeba, Paramecium and some protozoa that undergo the binary fission. In binary fission class, the cell division of prokaryotes that forms into genetically identical cells. So, kung titignan natin class yung sa kanan, ito po example ng paramecium's. So, once the paramecium's reproduce, mahahati po siya, and then yung sa baba class, yun ang tinatawag nating daughter cells. Ibig sabihin ko ano pong itsura ng anak o yung daughter cells, pareho po doon sa parent. Kaya tinatawag po silang fission. So the cell begins to grow longer, so pulling the two copies apart, and the cell membrane pinches inward in the middle of the cell, and the organism is normally uniform to the parent at the same time to the offspring. And the best example of this microorganism is bacteria, E. coli, and the pond critters. We also have 
spore formation. Spore formation class undergo into budding. Okay, spores are formed by fungi and are often contained within a structure known as a sporangium, which will disintegrate, releasing the spores into the environment. So when the spore lands in a suitable environment, it will germinate, forming a new fungus, just like, for example, if the bread or the food na meron tayo sa bahay exposed sa environment. So, maya-maya o ilang araw po yan, class, magkakaroon po yan ng bread molds kasi spores are surrounding us. Ibig sabihin na sa ating paligid. Hindi man natin to nakikita, class, pero nandyan lang po yan sila. Kaya, class, once ang food ay hindi po natakpan, maaari po yung makontaminado ng ibang uri ng organisms just like the bread mold. Kaya, class, ang spores I naga undergo into uh, formation like budding. And then the budding class is pagdating po sa organism ay naga undergo sila ng mitosis and cell division on the body of its parents. So ibig sabihin po ng budding dito sa kanan po ay yung parent po ay may tutubo po doon na parang kamukha ng isang parent kaya po tinatawag po siyang budding o buds okay identical po yung yung organism sa parent and in the bud with when large enough can break off to the parent and live on its own ibig sabihin class pag sobrang laki na po nung isang new organism sa hydrang to mapuputol yan at dadami at dadami at magpo-form into colony the best example class is yeast hydra and cactus and then the difference between fragmentation and regeneration class when we say fragmentations so when these organism or microorganism fragment or naputol-putol, yung lahat ng mga putol-putol class, it would grow into a new organism. Yun po yung fragmentation. Pag sinabi naman pong regeneration, it, uh, it talks about healing. Okay? Healing po. Ibig sabihin, pag naputol po ang buntot ng butike or starfish, ibig sabihin mag -heal para magkaroon ng panibagong um, parts, okay? Tandaan po natin, pag sinabing fragmentation, may involve na new organism. Pag regeneration, wala. Ibig sabihin, healing lang po siya. In regeneration class, of course, when an offspring grows from piece of its parent. So, producing new organism during regeneration class, example of these is sea stars, sea urchins, sea cucumbers, sponges, and planarians. And in producing new body parts like gecko, newts, tadpoles, crabs, hydra, and zebrafish. Take note class in regrowth or regeneration. The last part, such as in the case of the brittle star and lizard tail, is not considered as a type of reproduction because there are no organisms is formed. In vegetative propagation class, uh, it has a uniform offspring growth from a part of a parent plant. So the parent plant sends out runners, okay, where the runners touches the ground, so magkakaroon po ng roots at tutubo. And then once a new plant is produced, even if the runner is broken apart, okay, each new plant is uniform and identical to the parent. Best example is strawberry, potatoes, ivy, and crabgrass. And then, in reproduces offspring class during plant propagation, the vegetative organs such as stem, roots, and leaf are used to propagate to, into another plant. So, example of these are the eyes or dimples of a potato, stems of the strawberries, and ginger root and banana for the plant. And here, we have the different way in order to propagate the plant, okay? Pwede pong roots, okay, tulad ng ginger, pwede po bulb, tulad ng onion, pwede po potato, roots, at iba pa. Yan po ang mga paraan para pwede po tayo magpadami ng halaman. Next, we have sexual reproduction. A sexual reproduction class is a type of cells that has a cell nucleus. And new cells are organized into complex structure by internal membranes. So basically, class, meron po siyang nucleus ang sexual reproduction. 
Okay, organisms that are made of eukaryotic cells are also called as eukaryotes. Okay, and then when we say sexual reproduction class, there are two parents are involved. There is the gametes are produced, one from the female and one from the male, and the offspring are genetically different from the parents. Okay, sexual reproduction class is a type of reprodu reproduction in which the genetic materials from two different cells combine, producing an offspring. So these um, cells are called as the female and the male. When we say male class, ito yung sperm cell. At pag sinabing female, egg cell. So ito pong tinatawag natin sex cells or gametes. So when these two cells are combined, they would fertilize Pag na-fertilize po sila class, magko-combine, and then new cell is formed. At tinatawag po itong zygote. Then we have internal fertilization. Pag sinabi po internal fertilization class, of course, inside the female part. Okay, ibig sabihin, yung egg and sperm cell na fertilize sa loob ng katawan ng tao o sa loob ng katawan ng babaeng parent. So, example of this is the reptiles, the birds, and all the mammals develop takes place inside the female body. And then, in an internal fertilization class, may tinatawag tayong oviparous. So, when we say oviparous, animals are, are lay egg with little or no other embryonic development within the mother. So, ang tawag po sa kanila oviparous. Example is lizards, hens, or lahat ng animals basta naglilay ng egg. Ang tawag po sa kanila ay oviparous animals. This is the reproductive method of most fish, amphibians, most reptiles, antisaurus, dinosaur birds, and the monotremes. And then all birds also lay eggs, snakes, spiders, platypus, crabs, butterflies are examples of oviparous animals. So if the fertilized egg class retain inside the female, but the embryo gets its nourishment from the egg yolk, this is called also ovoviviparity. And next we have viviparity. In a vi viviparity animals class, this is where the embryo develops inside the female body and receives nourishment from or through a placenta. Best example is humans because humans develop embryo to form into baby. So many familiar animals class that we know that consider as viviparous like dogs, cats, pigs, pigs rather, and horses. Ibig sabihin, pag sinabing viviparity, may placenta na na-involve. And then we also have external fertilization. In external fertilization, of course, in the environment or outside of an animal body. So most animal class are produced using external fertilization do not care for the eggs or the young. Example of this is the jellyfishes, clumsy, sea urchins, sea stars, many species, species rather, and the amphibians. Okay. Why do you think is advantage or disadvantage between internal fertilization to external fertilization? So the advantage of these two fertilization is that in internal fertilization class, the survival rate is very high, though few offspring are produced and the mother protects the developing offspring from dehydrations and the predators. And the advantage also of the external fertilization, many offspring are produced but susceptible to predators, so few mothers protect their young. So the take note class, those are the possible um, advantage or disadvantage of the animals that undergo in the internal fertilization and external fertilization. And sexual reproduction among plants also needs a male and a female gamete. Okay, the pollen is the male gamete and the ovum is the female gamete. So fertilized egg or zygote is produced upon the union of these.
your needs. So the zygote develops into an embryo and eventually into fruits which develop from the ovary glass that contains seeds which is formed from the ovum. So the reproductive organ of the plant is the flower. So the pollination class is the process of transferring from pollen grains to or from the anther to the stigma. And the bees, butterflies, and wasps and small birds are considered as the pollinators that they are responsible for transferring the pollen to another flowers and here we have parts of the flower so this type of flower is a complete flower we have the male parts the stamen the anther and the filament and the pistil is the female part that includes stigma style ovary Take note class, in the ovary, it is where the fruit starts to grow. Okay, tandaan po natin yan.